Shalom family. First in all praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, Baha Shem Rakadash, all praises do. Man, oh man, oh man. We just got out of the brotherhood breakdown. Man, the spirit been moving. Spirit been moving. I ain't it's it's still here, bro. I've been feeling this since we started the brotherhood breakdown. And man, uh I thought about bringing this out. It hit me right after I got done. Oh, right before, actually, right before we started the meeting, I was gonna bring this out, this chapter, but Spirit told me to save it for a video. So here I am. Oh uh, man, just speaking about courage, man, I think I'm, I'm gonna title this video, uh, 10 Toes Down. I'm gonna title this video, uh, I'm just gonna title this video. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna title this video, 10 Toes Down, bro. We gotta have courage and faith through these times we're about to go through, man. We gotta have courage and faith. And we was talking about, um, Khalil was talking about, Shalom Khalil, you watching this. Um, Khalil was bringing up all the people who have faith during the things that they experienced over the Bible. He brought up Job, brought up Yahweh Shai, and explaining how these people had, to, uh, it's a crazy amount of faith to get through what they would, they would put through. And that's exactly how we gonna have to get up out of here. Crazy faith. And this one story, hit me right over the head. I'm like, damn, I should have brought this out. But then, ah, save it for the video. So, today, it's a lesson on courage, aka standing ten toes down. We're going to be in the pocket for today. I'm going to read the entire chapter of 2 Maccabees, chapter 7. This whole chapter, you talking about faith? This whole fucking chapter, dog, like, crazy. But this, uh, I ain't gonna bring no precepts. I'm gonna stick straight to this chapter, unless the spirit hit me. You know how the spirit works. But uh, I'm gonna try to just stick straight to this chapter because it ain't really you no know, need to get no precepts. You can just read and just, just really read along. Please, if you got the apocrypha on your phone on the Bible, read along so you can really uh, get a, a better understanding of. It. I mean, of course, you can listen all day, but when you listen and reading, you know, using more of your senses, so you it, it hits you different. Spirit. So this is Second Maccabees chapter 7 starting at verse 1 it says it came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to taste swine's flesh and were tormented with scourges and whips so a uh, brief um, little intro here the seven brethren and their mother were gonna were being forced to eat swine's flesh they had to eat uh intestines of a, of a pig man um you know that was heathen things that they did bro they were getting forced to do that if they didn't want to do it if they weren't going to do it then they had to be killed and tortured and these seven brethren and their mother they all stood ten toes down in the title of this uh video they stood ten toes for yahweh man and of course yahweh shot wasn't here yet so they really only knew yahweh at the time so they stood ten toes for the most high and let's read verse 2 it says but one of them that spake first said thus this is first first son first brother he said what wouldst thou ask or learn of us we are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers i'm gonna read that again but one of them that spake first said thus what wouldst thou ask or learn of us we are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers they were ready to die. They didn't give a fuck what this king was telling them to do, bro. If it went, if anything that went against uh, the Most High's laws, they was not trying to do it, bro. They said, we were we ready to die, bro. Go ahead and kill me, bro. However you got to do it. They don't care, bro. They said they're ready, they ready to die. Verse 3. It says, then the king, being in a rage, commanded pans and cauldrons to be made hot, which forwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first and to cut off the uttermost parts of his body, the rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. So what they did to the first brother that spoke up, they cut out his tongue and they trying to cut his body in pieces while his six brothers and his mama got to watch the whole thing happen, bro. That sounds terrible. Get your tongue cut off and they cutting off your body parts one by one. And mind you, bro, they didn't probably have ain't no the weapons that we got now, bro. The shit that we got, it could just one slice and you're done, bro. They probably had to saw that shit off 
with some weak ass metal that they probably had. However, they did it, bro. They, that was long. You talking about long suffering, bro? It wasn't no one good slice and that bitch is off, bro. No, they had to go back and forth, probably, bro, in front of his family, bro, his brothers and his mom, bro. Can you imagine what kind of courage and faith it takes to go through that and have zero fear? Man, verse five. It says, Now when he was thus maimed in all his members, he commanded him being yet alive. So this man got his body parts cut off and this man is still alive, bro. So let's see what the king did to him. He said he commanded him being yet alive to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pan as the vapor of the pan was for good space dispersed. They exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully saying thus. So, bro, so they cut his body parts off, bro. I don't know. It doesn't specify what they cut off, bro. But it says he was still alive, bro. They put him in a in the fire, bro. And they put him in a pan and cooked him and fried him alive, bro. Can you imagine, bro? Like, just really think about that. Really imagine that, bro. Verse 6. It says, Yahweh, thy power, looketh upon us, and in truth has comforted us, as Moses in his song, which writes, which witnesses, which, like you, which witnessed to their faces, declaring, saying, and he be comforted in all his servants. Verse seven. All right, so the first son is now dead. So when the first son was dead, after this manner, they brought the second to make him a mocking stock. And when they pulled off the skin of his head with the hair, they asked him, Will thou eat before thou be punished throughout every member of thy body? He said, Are you going to do what I command you? Or are you going to be, or you rather be uh, tormented and killed in front of your whole family? Let's see what he said. Verse 8, but he answered in his own language and said, no. Wherefore, he also received the next torment in order as the former did. So the second son now dies and he got the same punishment that the first guy. Verse 3 or verse 9. Let's see what he said on his, lying bre or his dying breaths. And when he was at his last gasp, he said, thou like a fury takest us out of this present life. But the king of the world shall raise us up. Who have died for his laws unto everlasting life. I'm gonna read that again. He said, Thou has thou like a fury taketh takest us out of this present life, but the king of the world shall raise up, raise us up, who have died for his laws unto everlasting life. He already knew the reward that he was gonna get from Yahweh for dying for his laws, bro. He already knew the reward. He stood ten toes down. Verse 10. So we got two brothers dead. Verse 10. After him was the third made a mocking stock. And when he was required, he put out like it. He put out his tongue in that right soon, holding forth his hands manfully. Alright, so he's about to be killed. He's being killed. Let's see what he said. Verse 11. He said, and said courageously, courage. He said these words courageously. These I had from heaven. And for his laws, I despise them. And from him, I hope to receive them again. Verse 12. And so much that the king and they that were with him marveled at the young man's courage. For that he, for, sorry, for that he nothing regarded the pains. He already knew that he was getting uh, chastened from the most high, bro. This is all part of him from going off, bro. So they had the punishment for this, bro. But they was faithful, bro. They was not going to sin against the most high. They were courageous, and they, he was so courageous that even the king and the other uh, servants of the king marveled at the man. Verse 4. Now when this man was dead also, they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. So now the fourth son is dead. So let's see what it said, verse 14. So when he was ready to die, he said thus, It is good being put to death by men to look for the hope from the power to be raised up again by him. As for thee... Thou shalt have no resurrection to life. He knew the king was going to get a horrible judgment from the Most High. He knew. He said, I'm dying because I know I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, the Most High promises for me to be raised up in resurrection. He said, but for you, you shall have no resurrection. Verse 15. Afterward, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men. Thou art corruptible. That thou doest what thou wilt. Yet, Think not that our nation is forsaken of the power. 
verse 17 but a while but abide a while and behold his great power how he will torment thee in thy seed the fifth son knew that the torment of the king's seed of all his people was going to be great he said the, the most high did never abandon them uh he said um, uh, i'm read it he says yet think not that our nation is forsaken of the power he says just because you think you're doing this to me don't think that the most high has forsaken me he said the most high does not forsake his nation bro he already knew that so now the fifth son is dead let's get uh verse 18 after him also they brought the six who being ready to die said be not deceived without cause for we suffer these things for ourselves having sinned against our power therefore marvelous things are done unto us they knew that they were getting this uh this judgment from the most high because they sinned bro but at the very end they got tried again because the king was trying to make them sin against the most high on their own will bro he was saying will you eat these meats uh the swine's flesh and they said no i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna disrespect the most high like that and that's why they being tortured bro so they were already being tortured for a certain reason but now they stand standing 10 toes for this for yahweh bro Verse 19, but think not that thou takest in, Slaki, I'm reading that again. But think not thou that takest in hand to strive against us, that thou shalt escape unpunished. The sis gonna say, you're not gonna escape what's gonna come to you for doing this to us, bro. He said, all right, you can kill me, but understand the most high will not let you escape. He sees all things. Verse 20, but the mother mar was marvelous above all and worthy of honorable memory for when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day she bare it all with good courage because of the hope that she had in Yahweh. she had high courage she just witnessed six of her sons be killed right before her eyes cut uh throat cut out i mean tongues cut off hair ripped off their heads bro baked in frying pans getting cut in pieces and and in front of their mother bro she watched all of this shit happen bro and she was courageous through it all verse 21 yea she exalted every one of them in her own language filled with courageous spirits and stirring up her her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach she said unto them i cannot tell how you came into my womb for i neither gave you breath nor life neither was it that i formed the members of every one of you but doubtless the creator of the world who formed the generation of man and found out the beginning of all things will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again as you now regard not your own selves for his law's sake. Man, oh man, verse 24. Now, I don't know how to say this man's name. Antiochus, Antiochus, I'm sorry, I know I'm butchering that right now. Uh, thinking himself despised and suspecting it to be a reproachful speech whilst the youngest was yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with the oaths that he would make him both a rich and happy man if he would turn from the laws of his fathers and that he would take him for his friend and trust him with affairs. So the king just killed seven brothers he just killed seven of them bro i mean uh, it's like six he killed six of them so now before he kills the last one which is the youngest he's trying to make a deal with him he says i'm gonna read it again bro he says he exhorted him by words but assured him with oaths he said he made him a promise he said he would make him a rich and happy man if he turned against the laws of the most high I will make you a rich and happy man. So he's trying to finesse the youngest son into doing this. Verse 25. It says, but when the young man would in case not hearken unto him, in no case hearken unto him, the king called his mother and exhorted her that she would counsel the young man to save his life. So the young man, the youngest son was not trying to hear what this man was trying to say, bro. He was like, no, bro, I'm not going to fold. I'm not folding, bro. I don't care what you offer me. I'm not folding. So now the king is trying to tell the mom to tell her son to, to go against the most high so that he can get saved, so he can spare his life. The king he really wants to save the son. He's trying to finesse the youngest one, bro, because he's the youngest. He probably doesn't know a lot. That's why he's trying to finesse the gun and not the older ones. He's telling the mother, please tell your son to go against your, your power's laws. 
so I can make him a rich man to save it. He's trying. I want him to save his life, but he's not taking it. Please, I hope he'll listen to you and not me. So let's get 26. This shit is funny. Peep this shit. Uh, and when he had exhorted her with many words, she promised him that she would counsel her son. All right. So the mother said, all right, I'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. Verse 27, Peep. But she bowing herself towards him, laughing the cruel tyrant to scorn and spake in her country language of this manner. Oh, my son, have pity upon me that bear these nine months and that bear thee nine months in my womb and gave thee suck three years and nourished thee and brought thee up unto this age and endured the troubles of education. I beseech thee, my son, look upon the heaven and the earth and all that is therein and consider that the power made them of these things that were not. And so mankind may likewise fear not this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. So she promised the king. She said, all right, I'm going to talk to him. She bows herself to the king and laughs at this nigga's face and calls that nigga a cruel tyrant and tell her son, fear not this tormentor. She said, don't be afraid. Take your death now. For that when we all get resurrected, I will be with you again, you and your brothers, with me. She said, take thy death so that she can receive you again in mercy. Verse 30. It says, while she yet spaking these words, the young man said, whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandment of the law that was given unto our fathers by Moses. Bro, so she's telling, she's, uh, telling uh, her son take your death don't be afraid fuck this dude bro don't even do that bro at whole time he was he had no intention of folding bro he wasn't even battling it bro he said who are you waiting for i have no intentions of fucking with this dude bro <laughs> he already knew what it was verse 31 now the son is talking to the king look what he said and thou and thou that has been the author of all mischief against the hebrews shall not escape the hands of the power for we suffer because of our sins and though the living power in Oslakia, and though the living Lord Yahweh be angry with us a little while for our chastenings and correction, yet shall he be at one again with his servants. You can really think about this as us as well, bro. That really hit me, bro. He said, uh, he's angry with us a little while, bro. Just a little while. A little while, bro. He's mad at Israel right now. That's that other most farting, bro. He's getting back everything that we did wrong, bro. Yes, we know him. Yes, we know his laws. Yes, we know who we are, bro. Yes, we uh, love Yahweh Shah Hamashah with all our heart, bro. He said, we still owe. We still owe, bro. Everybody gonna get it, bro. We still owe. He's still angled us just a little bit, bro. But what did he say? Yet shall he be at one again with his servants. 18 minutes. We are cooling. Yeah, I'm gonna finish this all in one take. It says, verse uh, 34. It says, but thou, O godless man, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifting up thy hand against the servants of the power. For thou has not yet escaped the judgment of the almighty power, who seeth all things. He says, you have not yet escaped. He said, your day is coming. Your day of your judgment and your calamity is coming. Verse 36. For our brethren whom now have suffered a short pain are dead under the power's covenants of everlasting life. But thou, through the judgment of the power, shalt receive a just punishment for thy pride. I'm going to read that again. Verse 36. It says, For our brethren who have now suffered a short pain, a dead are dead under the power's covenant of everlasting life. But thou, through the judgment of the power, shalt receive just punishment for thy pride. Every single nation that is on top right now will get punished for their pride. They are prideful because they are on the top right now. These Japhites, these Edomites, these Ammonites, these Moabites, these Canaanites, these uh, the Persians, bro. Everybody, bro. Everybody. Their pride will be recompensed upon their own heads. Verse 37. It says, but I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of the, our fathers beseeching means preaching the power that he would speedily be merciful unto our nation and that thou by torments and plagues may confess that he alone is the power i'm read that again 
But as but I, as my brethren, offer up my body and life for the laws of our power of our fathers, beseeching. I didn't mean uh uh preaching. I mean um like to exalt, mean to praise, mean to uh shout it out, bro. The power that he will speedily be merciful. Beseeching means to beg. So like that means like to beg and plead. It says pleading the power that he will speedily be merciful unto our nation. And that thou, by torments and plagues, may confess that he alone is the power. And that in me and my brethren, the wrath of the Almighty, which is justly brought upon all our nation, may cease. Then the king, being in a rage, handled him worse than all the rest, and took it grievously that he was mocked. So he did the, the youngest son worse than he did the first six, bro. And mind you, the first son... They, they all of them got it bad, bro. They cut out their tongue, cut them body parts in pieces, burn them in a frying pan, bro. What worse shit can you do than that, bro? I don't, can't imagine what the fuck he did to the youngest son, bro. But the youngest son talked to his shit, bro. The youngest son let that king have it, bro. He told him, Yahweh will not forget thy iniquities, bro. He's not gonna forget what you did to us. Uh, let's finish it out, verse forty through forty-two. It says, "So this man died on the file and put his whole trust in Yahweh." He died undefiled, perfectly, bro. He died, he was blameless. It says 41, last of all, after the sons, the mother died. It doesn't speak about how she was killed. But it says, verse 42, it says, let this be enough now to have spoken concerning the idolatrous feasts and the extreme tortures. This right here is one of the most ultimate stories of faith and courage and what it truly means to stand ten toes down for Yahweh by Shem Yahweh These seven brothers and their mother, they sought no other power but Yahweh. They sought nobody else, bro. They were put in front of the king. The king said, you're going to eat this swine's flesh or you're going to die and get tortured first and then you're going to die. They all did not hesitate to say, kill me, bro. They did not hesitate. Not one of them, bro. Even the son who was offered a way out took no intention of getting his way out bro he took it the hard way he took that punishment dearly bro because he knew what the reward was bro think about Yahweh bro he took the courage bro Yahweh did not ask he did not look back bro when Yahweh came here bro he knew what he had to do he had to endure so much bro if you haven't bro read Isaiah um is it 53 let me check it first before I go here I think it's 53 Con, it's 53. If you haven't, bro, read Isaiah 53, bro. Just it, read about what Yahweh went through, bro. Isaiah seen it all, bro. Isaiah, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah saw the whole thing, bro. He already knew what Yahweh was gonna suffer, bro. Just really, really think about what he suffered, and just imagine you have to be, mind you, you got to get sent here, bro, on a mission to die for your people, bro. You got to tell Yahweh said you got to preach everything, everything that you're gonna speak. I'm gonna tell you what to say, bro. So I'm gonna tell you everything what to say. He sends you here. You're gonna have um you're gonna have family, you're gonna have close friends, you're gonna have some uh your followers, some true disciples, there's gonna be 12 of them. Out of that 12, one of them is gonna be a um a devil. He's gonna be a demon unto you, bro. But you gotta keep him around. See, Yahweh knew that um that Judas was gonna betray him the whole time, bro. But he had to keep him around, bro. Could you imagine having to have close friends and you had to keep them around, even though you know one of them was finna backdoor you eventually, bro? And you knew it, you knew it. And you have to keep him around that whole time. Can you imagine the mental battles Yahweh had to go through, bro? Yeah, Yahweh was uh had a spiritual powers, bro. But he had a he was in the flesh, bro. He had fleshly thoughts too, bro. Yahweh had to battle demons, bro. You know he shit. Satan himself had to come down and talk and tempt him, bro. So Yahweh had a ton of mental battles, bro. He had to get killed, get ridiculed in front of everybody that he's trying to help. You trying to help all these people, bro? And they want to get you killed, bro. And the person who got you, who said to kill him, bro, he saw no fault in you. He, uh, Pilate said, I see no fault in this man, bro. And the people said, kill him. He's all right. It's on y'all. He washed his hands. He said, the blood is on y'all. And the people said, uh, if he be innocent, put it on me and my generations behind me, bro. That's why you get generational curses from him, bro. But man, you talking about courage. We got to have courage, Ox. And Aqua who's watching. We got to have faith. The just shall live by faith. Through faith, through faith, through faith, bro. We're going to go through a lot, but we understand that this is it. 
this is it bro so uh i don't want to keep this video longer than it already is bro so that just hit my spirit i had to come uh i had to read it for myself first because i remembered the story but i never read it through and through read it through and through bro instantly made this video for y'all bro make sure you when if you're making videos bro make sure like matthias said you got to make it for yourself and then it's for everybody else bro so that's what you got to do man but I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, for there is no God but Him. Um, give Him all praises due. Shalom, family. See y'all next time.